Hey. <laughs> I never know how to start the video. <laughs> My name's Kara Sexton, otherwise known as Kara Sexton Art on all these social medias. I'm an illustrator and designer. I sell art prints, stickers, and pins on Etsy. I've had my Etsy shop for a little over a year, and I just started this YouTube a few months ago, and I found that my most popular videos are these Etsy videos of, like, behind the scenes and, like, how to do stuff. So I'm listening to you, and I'm making you more Etsy videos. So for this Etio- this Etio- <laughs> For this video, I'm going to talk about 15 tips of making your life on Etsy a little bit easier. The first one I could think of, have a clean desk space to work on when you're packaging orders. You'll find that even after you wipe down your desk and you think that it's really clean, there's still dust just lingering and that dust will get underneath your tape and it'll get in your prints. When you put your prints in the, in the plastic sheets, it'll get underneath your plastic sheet and it's, it's just gonna drive you crazy. So make sure you have a clean desk space and make sure your hands are clean. Oh, that's a good one. Make sure, <laughs> make sure you clean your, wash your hands really good before you sit down and package orders because dirty hands and clean prints, they do not mix. Yeah, that's a weird one, I know. That's a weird one to start out with, but whatever. Another one, stock up on supplies before you run out. So check your printer ink and your toner. Is there a way of checking your toner? Maybe just have extra toner somewhere because I have two printers. If you've seen my other video, I have two printers. So make sure you have ink for them and toners and paper and then like your packaging supplies over there. I'm a hypocrite because I'm totally low on my small packages and I'm, I have to send out a bunch of orders so I'm like waiting. <laughs> so if, if you order your packaging online, you don't want to wait until you're out and like scramble to find something to use to ship out these new orders because you're out. I think this is an obvious one, but set a rough schedule of when you want to do things. So when you're an Etsy shop owner, you have to do a lot. So give yourself times that you send out orders. I do mine Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, usually. Sometimes I'll do Thursday or Saturday, but I try to do it three times a week, depending on the amount of orders that I get. And when I first started, I would just ship things out right when I got them, because I lived five minutes from the post office and I got excited. But it doesn't work after a while. When you get start getting more orders, you need to have a set schedule to do packaging. And I usually like to separate my art days from my business days. So maybe like two days a week, I'll, one or two days a week, I'll do businessy stuff. For business days, I'll start by doing packaging and that could take a few hours. Um, and then I'll do some organizing or some accounting, respond to emails, then advertising, maybe edit a video or plan for my next art piece. And that could be like gathering reference material or sketching out a new art piece, and I'll do, th I'll do that the next day. So if I'm not feeling motivated or inspired to create new artwork, I'll devote that entire day to doing businessy stuff and do the business side of things. I know that I get my best artsy stuff done first thing in the morning, starting around 8.30 or 9.30, and then I usually get burnt out like around 2 to 4 p.m., and I'll need the rest of the day off from art. And maybe I'll, I'll do like, post something on Instagram or post a new, like a blog post or something. But my creative lifespan throughout the day, it's pretty short and I know that now <laughs> and it's okay. And you need to give yourself more days off and write that in your schedule because I need to do that too, I'm gonna do that. Another thing, get out of the house. <laughs> I'm a hypocrite because I, I don't do this enough, but you need to get outside and you need to have friends and you need to, even if you're just going to a coffee shop and working and looking like a total hipster, you need to get out of the house. And for me, I like going to the park or the library, the bookstore, like just a coffee shop, anywhere. You can go for a walk around the block, you'll feel better. Even after a walk around the block, you'll feel better. Yeah, I need to do that more. Another important thing that people don't talk about enough, or I haven't even, I haven't really heard it much, and that's 
being professional through your emails and messages. With Etsy, you're gonna get people messaging you asking about maybe commissions or print sizes or whatever it is. And I always think that you should have a greeting. So, hi, the person's name, and then respond with maybe two or three sentences. And then at the end say, thanks for your time. So like a send off and then your name. So a greeting, a nice, written out two sentences at least, and then a, a, a send-off with your name. Use proper grammar as, as best as you can and proper uh, punctuation. Have patience. If, there, if you come across a problem, which you will on Etsy, you're going to come across some, some problems. Just have patience and be understanding and just do your best. Customer service is a part of being on Etsy, so take it seriously and always try your best to respond to all messages and emails. Now that I think of it, just be professional in general. Um, if you have a table at a convention or a craft fair and you're selling your artwork, or you're out at a gallery opening, even if you don't even have art in the gallery and you're, you're just introducing yourself to people, just be professional. Have business cards with you just in case, no pressure, but just, just in case, and just be a decent human being and don't be an asshole and don't have your nose in the air and think that you're hot shit. Be very open to conversations and just be, be very approachable and friendly. And yeah, that's, that's life advice. That's not even Etsy advice. That's life advice for me to you. Just be nice. <laughs> Another thing is figuring out your brand. Um, what I mean is like the consistency of your shop and that could be from your artwork to your graphic design to your advertising your product photography um, Everything everything is your brand to figure out your brand It helps to know your audience and for me I created a Pinterest board to help me find out my brand and I pin things like interior design that I like graphic design color patterns photography style in general um, photos of people who I think would like my art it helps. It helps if you're stuck in an artistic rut and you, you need some inspiration, that board will help you. And it'll help guide you like, oh yeah, you know, this is, ha this like for interior design, you're like, oh yeah, you know, I could see my artwork right in the middle of that. And when I first started out, I didn't really have a set audience, but I'm just now starting to learn who is not only responding to my art, but is purchasing as well. So it's gonna be trial and error, I think. Um, unless you're just on top of it and you know it right off the bat, so kudos to you. But it's tough. Branding, figuring out your brand is tough. Some people will disagree with me on this one, but be on as many social media websites as you can. This has helped me a lot, actually. But it's, I mean, people will find ways of advertising, but for, so, for me, it was social media. Social media is like how I eat. You'll find that some work better than others and there will be a different audience for each each platform. For me, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Tumblr, uh, WordPress, Behance, ArtStation, and I'm on um, Patreon too. This is a big one and that is never stop learning. And it, not just about art, um, research about business, typography, photography, everything. Just keep learning about everything and stay interested in everything. It'll keep you inspired and it keeps your work fresh. I said fresh weird. Behind the scenes stuff is really fun. I like seeing it. Instagram stories is a really good way of showing people what it's like behind the scenes. And by behind the scenes, I mean like you packaging stuff or you creating the artwork and doing a timeless video or um, anything. Just show that you're a human being. You know, th that's the, the glory about having a small business is it's you doing all the work. So just show it, like show how hard you're working. I can honestly say that on Instagram, that's my favorite thing to see is behind the scenes stuff from other artists. Some people might disagree with me on this one, but post a professional photo of you somewhere. 
Like on Etsy, I'll have, I have a picture of my otter with a trumpet print, and then I have a picture of myself as the shop owner. So you could see, like, my otter's kind of like my logo, and then a picture of me, like, hey, I'm a human, this is my face. <laughs> I hear that it builds connection and trust with your customer, um, but only if you want to. If you're not comfortable taking photos, don't take photos, it's fine. But if you are, if you do want to, put on your best outfit, do your hair how you like it, throw on some makeup if you want to, you don't have to, find some good lighting, and have someone snap a photo of you, or set up a tripod, or slyly take a selfie and make it look not like a selfie. There are videos on YouTube, I can guarantee it, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure there are, of how to take a good photo of yourself with your phone. You, can, you don't even have to have a fancy camera, just with your phone. And be confident in this photo. This is like you saying, I have my own business and I'm cool. Go me. So be confident. I could tell you from experience, okay? Keep your camera at eye level. Don't put your camera like facing, facing up. Like it's way down here, like facing up. Don't do it like that. Don't, don't have it too high looking down because it's just weird. So just have it at eye level. It's not weird. Everything else is weird. Just keep it, keep it at eye level. This is my favorite, favorite tip of all. Invest in some good, cute, comfy PJ sweats or leggings. Just throwing it out there. It sucks when you have to wear jeans and you're sitting at your desk for, I don't even know, just endless amount of hours every week. Um, you want to be comfortable. I like to put my, my legs up on the chair and if you're in jeans, it's not as comfortable. Just buy, just buy comfy pants. Just do it for yourself. Or maybe, I mean, that's just me though. So for me, I always shower, okay? I shower every day, but I'll put pajamas on after I shower and I do not feel shame for it. <laughs> it gets cold in here and I'm gonna get cozy. I'm gonna wear a comfy sweatshirt too. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Closing thoughts here. Everything I say in this video, it's not gonna mean much to you now because nothing will prepare you like actually doing it, like actually running your own Etsy shop. So you're gonna learn as you go, just as, just as I did. I've watched videos like this one a year ago and I've read blogs and I've participated in webinars and I've done everything and nothing prepares you like actually doing it. You will learn as you go. You will learn from your mistakes and you'll find what works for you. And you just got to be confident. Just stay focused on making it work. That's my best advice for you. Just stay focused. And pay, don't worry about what other people are doing so much and just get it done. So I hope you like this video and I hope you learned something, maybe. Um, check out my other videos if you are interested in hearing more about Etsy, specifically as an artist or illustrator. <laughs> Oh, I can't talk. I'll leave a link to my shop in the description, as well as all the other social medias if you'd like to follow me and join me on my journey of Etsy-ness. <laughs> I'm so awkward today. <laughs>